What is runway? What is runway? We talked about it very briefly in uh, in episodes here and there, but I want to get very specific. When people talk about runway, it is the amount of money, amount of time that you can do your work based on the money that you have. So if you have $2,000 in checking and you know it costs $500 a month to run your particular business, not counting your personal stuff, but run your particular business, then it's 2,000 divided by 500 equals four. That means you have four months runway. Not a lot of time, you better get some clients, right? <laughs> That's not a lot of time. The more runway you have, the more freedom you have with your work. Now, here's the key part of it. When we sign on these particular contracts, we're often given an advance. You might've heard of that. An advance is the money that they give you when you sign the contract. Usually it'll be half the advance. Sometimes it's all the advance, but that's a little bit more rare, but it's often half the advance when you sign and then the other half when you complete the project. For instance, if you're doing a book, this is published through Bring Your Worth Publishing, thank you very much. But <laughs> if you're with a traditional publisher and they're like, hey, Damon, hey, Jeanette, we're gonna, we want you to do the passive writer. Let's go ahead and do this book. We're like, cool. They're like, great. We're gonna give you a $20,000 advance. We're gonna give you 10,000 now. And then the manuscript, when completed, is due about a year from now. So September, let's say of 2024, cool. When you guys have the complete manuscript and everything's edited and it's ready to go to the printer, then you guys will get the other half of the advance, which is $10,000. That's the advance. The advance, quite literally, in any case, whether it's uh, the music industry, it's set up a little bit differently, but the same, the same top terminology. It's a uh, music advance. It's an advance on a TV show. If you're being like a, um, a creator for a television show and, and someone wants you to, to write a script, it's, it's a very similar process. The advance literally is supposed to be the money that you live on while you create the project. And so if you end up getting a particular advance and they say, hey, here's a $5,000 advance and your project is due a year from now, they're basically saying, here's $5,000 to live on for the next year. Of course, if you do the math real quick, they're giving you the equivalent of what, $400 a month, which, you know, I don't know where you live, but you know, it doesn't work in Vegas. And so as you talk about these creations, that's what the advance means. The advance leads directly to runway because if the advance isn't right, you're not gonna have enough runway to make it. I've been there before, I've been excited to get a book deal or whatever, whatever. And then I'm like, well, I can make that work. And then it's a month or two in and it's like, wow, I already went through that money and I still have 80% of the project to write or create. That's a tough place to be. Runway is important because that should be in tune negotiation of your advance. So I know folks who have gotten major book deals, let's say a book deal for six figures, which sounds like a lot. So let's say it's $100,000 for your book. Awesome, you're excited about it. Your book is due in three years. Okay, I got some time. And then it's going to, it's due, so you put in the manuscript, cool. But then it's actually not going to get published because public, publishing, industry, publishing industry is slow. It's not going to come out for another year after that because they need to schedule it. All right. So that means four years. You're not going to make any more money related to that book until you get royalties from the book being sold. And that's after those royalties make up for the money that they gave you in advance, which is why it's called the advance. So you might not get those first royalty opportunities until the year after it's out. So we're talking five years. So they give you $100,000, three years to work on the book, follow the math here. The book comes out a year after that. It's four years now. And then your first royalty statement, which means they figure out how many copies are sold in the first year, doesn't come until the fifth year, it's five years. So that $100,000 check they, they gave you not counting your agent, which usually takes 15%. Shout out to agents, it's completely fair. But that's the way it is. They take 15%, not counting taxes. Taxes, depending on the amount, you're talking 20 to 30%, maybe more if you're a baller like that. Not counting any of that. You're living on $20,000 a year for the next five years. 
Now you might have teaching positions, you might do a whole lot of other things. I have like five, six different businesses that I run. That's part of the reason why I have the passive income and I'm involved in so many different things. Because if you're just saying, I got a hundred thousand dollar check, I'm good, let me go buy a house. That's not gonna happen because you gotta take the taxes, you gotta take the agent out of it. And also it needs to last you for those five years. And that's if you're fortunate enough to sell through, which is the term, sell through those amount of books so that your royalties at that end of that first year are more than the 100,000 that they gave you. That's a lot of serious math. Feel free to watch the replay and you know rewind it, what have you. But that's the basic core of how we make a living as artists, particularly if we have traditional systems, which is why being independent and having your own publishing company, other things, there's risk involved, but it can be way more advantageous because you get the money sooner. My point is that when you sign these contracts, it has to be based on whatever your runway is. That's why you have to know your budget. That's why you have to know um, what you need. And that's why you have to know, which is why I bring your worth, what your work is worth. Because you end up signing a contract and then ends up being way below market value or what you're actually worth. You might be stuck with that particular contract for a very long time. There's certain contracts that I signed early on that I've just started to be able to negotiate, just starting to get my rights back on certain things, just starting to negotiate that. And I've been in the game for a long time. You see the gray hairs. So whatever you sign, you want to make sure that it fits what your particular runway is. So do me a favor right now, calculate what your runway is. So as you're going to look at these artist contracts and you break it down year to year, if it ends up being that long term, figure out if it actually fits the vibe and the space that you're in. If it doesn't, it might be worthwhile going forward anywhere, anyway, but finding other alternative financial resources to do so. Or it might be worth negotiating harder or maybe even passing up on the deal. Be sure to throw your questions or, or uh, feedback below. But I know it's a lot of information, but it's so, so important. That's one of the reasons why I coach people so much is that so many of us artists aren't familiar with that type of thing. One of the best books that you can check out on this is by Jenny Blake. Shout out to Jenny. Hope you're doing wonderful. Fantastic book. I've recommended it a few times on here. It leans more towards the entrepreneurship world, but it also fits really well into the creativity and the work that we do. This book, out of many of the books that I've read, living in Silicon Valley a few years back, the whole thing, having my own startups, this has perhaps one of the best definitions of runway. That's why I'm bringing it up here. I think there's a whole chapter dedicated to it. It's not a chapter, it's a whole section, several pages. Check out the book, see her breakdown of runway. Because when you're starting something new, when you're um, building a business, even when you're pursuing something that's long-term artistic, like writing a book, that's like a two, three year process for a lot of us. My first major book took me five years. That was five years of my life and I was still pretty young. So if you're going to be taking that leap or looking into it, you need to have a longer view and understand your runway. This has, again, out of all the books I've read, one of the best definitions of runway and a best way, one of the best ways to figure out if your runway is enough based on what you have coming in and more importantly, the contract that you're potentially going to sign. All right. We're, we're talking heat today. This stuff is important. Again, it doesn't matter if you have the best work in the world, if your contract's not right, then, you know, you won't necessarily have a legacy. You won't necessarily be getting the income that you want to get. And more importantly, you won't have the creative control that you think you might deserve because it really depends on the contract that you sign. Feel free to jump in. Let me know if there's any particular questions or insights that you guys have as far as with your contracts or anything, any, uh, any, any jams you might be in and we might be able to talk it through a little bit. Be sure and check out the, um, the link link below too, as far as with the understanding intellectual property in 10 shorts. If there's anything on this replay or in this live show that you might sound confusing, I'm, I'm happy to um, break it down 